International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. My name is Fred Jordan, and I am the president of F.E. Jordan Associates. We're consultant engineers, engineering designers, construction managers, civil structural environmental engineers. Uh, been around for a long time. Designed, built maybe a thousand projects in the Western U.S., Africa, and Central America. So today, and I'm also the chair of the San Francisco African American Chamber of Commerce. And so I have a mandate as the chair of that, and I've been involved in a number of civil rights organizations over the years. Today, I want to talk about something that's most significant, probably the most significant event coming up since Martin Luther King. And uh, this is Proposition 16, which has to do with the uh, with turning back an earlier proposition in 1996, which was Proposition 209. Now, Proposition 209, which was uh, developed and presented by only three people, and they convinced the citizens of California to change the Constitution to get rid of affirmative action, which is, represents equal opportunity, and to bring on what they call preference, no preference, and so the result has been disastrous. And uh, over the impacts have been enormous. Three years after proposition passed in, in, in 1996, African American contractors, 80% of all African-American contractors went out of business for good because what Proposition 209 represented was a legal a license to discriminate. And so it went back to the old days whereas uh, affirmative action uh, had uh, corrections uh, to provide equal opportunity for not only African-Americans but uh, all people of color and women and so uh, somehow it was so, it was, the, they say it was the most deceptive proposition in the history of this state. Uh, and actually it started off with, uh, with, with the Civil Rights Initiative. But the thing was that it took away civil rights. So again, these three people, who was the governor of California, Pete Wilson, the Attorney General of California, Dan Lundgren, and they could not do it without a black manager. His name was Ward Conley, and he was the manager to, uh, to overturn affirmative action for his own people. And today I'm going to be very candid, and so I'm, I'm not, this is a very serious matter. It has to do with lives and with deaths. And so, um, Proposition 209 has been on the books for 25 years. And uh, African Americans today in the state of California, in my particular area of interest, which is business, African American businesses do less than 1%. And that's all from the impacts of Proposition 209. And so what we're trying to do, and before that, let me just say this, before the, the demolition of Proposition 209, African Americans were doing okay. We were doing, we were at parity with, with all the other minorities. But today, where uh, other people of color and women, uh, prop, uh, they are enjoying uh, something like 17% participation of business, uh, African Americans are do, doing less than 1%. So it really, really was a license to discriminate. Now, uh, how did this come about and where are we today? 
Okay, it happened uh, with that deceptive proposition, uh, which also included women, not only minorities, and it came in, uh, the Los Angeles Times did a, a poll, a post-election poll, and that poll said that 25% of the people thought, of the voters, thought they were voting for affirmative action, to keep affirmative action. So that's how deceptive it was. So um, where we are today is that uh, little by little, innovative methods have been put out to try to increase uh, people of color, minorities, and to um, get women involved. But it's nowhere near parity, nowhere. And so uh, Proposition 16 will turn that around. It will give agencies uh, and administrators the right to uh, do things to bring about pa uh, parity and inclusiveness. And that's why we're fighting today. And we're, we're talking about um, bringing in uh, if, if we can get that, then they can ensure uh, certain policies uh, to, uh, to rectify the situation. So in front of me is a book that I wrote in 1996, uh, 97 I believe, which chronicled, uh, which, which told about all the activities uh, that were there to destroy this. Now remember, we're only one of uh, a few states, maybe nine states in the United States uh, that has no affirmative action. Uh, in other words, uh, no activity uh, to, um, to promote African Americans and people of color. And uh, to the left here is an award that was given to me because I headed up the campaign, the business campaign. And I just happened to be on a phone call when Governor Pete Wilson called up 23 corporations and said, you will not uh, go against Proposition 209 to that will bring preference and get rid of affirmative action. And, uh, and he said, if, if, you, if you do, you'll hear from me. And so we only had two companies uh, that came out and supported equal opportunity and the minorities and women, and that was PG&E and the Sacramento uh, Utility Company. I don't know the exact name, but the Sacramento Utilities. Uh, and so in the whole state, we only had support from two companies. But this time, we're hoping to get the support from the corporate world and uh, proposition uh, 16 or turn that around. The legislature uh, overwhelmingly voted to, um, to, to bring on Proposition 16 so it wouldn't have to be a, a measure that would have to get so many people, so many citizens to vote for it. So it's on that we have some uh, very illustrious leaders. The governor supports it. Um, our vice presidential candidate, Kamala Harris, supports it. And I can say that Senator Feinstein was a leader in trying to oppose Proposition 209, in other words, to keep affirmative action. And she was a, a, a leader, just like uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Ginsburg, uh, for women rights and for the rights of minorities. So today, we are facing this election, but we have to uh, we we have to go out and make this happen. I always say I don't. I try not to let things happen. I make things happen. And so, um, whether or not proposition passes, we must push on. We have to be innovative. We can put people on the moon, but we can't seem to bring equal opportunity to African Americans and other minorities and women. And, uh, and so there, there are ways, for instance, the University of California, right after Proposition 209, found a way to increase African Americans in their law school. Their law school had, uh, I forgot how many, maybe 80 to 100 
law students that were African Americans. Prop 209 passed, it went down to one. And so in latter times, uh, what the university did is that they took the names of, uh, of people who were uh, applying for admission. And anybody named Eddie Washington or, or Tom Jefferson, they knew that when the slaves were freed, they didn't know what to call themselves. So they named themselves after presidents. And so, uh, so that was one way. So, and then all of a sudden, Lord A began to get a lot of African Americans in the school. And then they, then they uh, looked at the, uh, the females uh, whose names were uh, like uh, Natasha and some of the African American uh, names, uh, Swahili names, and they, they admitted them. Uh, you know, of course, they were all qualified. And so, um, and so the admissions went up. It just so happened that this gentleman, Ward Carlini, I don't know if I can call him, call him a gentleman, but anyway, out of respect, uh, he um, uh, was, a, was a trustee over the University of California and somebody uh, squealed and told him what was happening to increase African Americans. And so, uh, you know, that's where we are. So uh, Proposition 16, no matter whether it passes or not, we have to go forward to, to make things happen to include African Americans or else who knows what's going to happen out here and so uh, I look at the, the fact that uh, the, what, what has been happening after George Floyd uh, uh, was, uh, was killed by police uh, in the Midwest there and uh, to me what's happening is, is even as important as when Martin Luther King was out there to bring about change. And uh, I, you know, I'm just so happy that I'm living at a time and in the right place and I'm from Washington, D.C. And, and my mother, one day I was out playing as a kid and my mother said, boy, come on, go with me. And I said, mom, I'm not finished my game yet. And she said, ah, you go with me, go in there and clean up. And we go down to a place called the Washington Monument and all these buses were coming in there and I said, Mom, where did all these tacky people come from? I remember distinctly I had that, that vocabulary at that time. And, and so this gentleman, so everything quieted down and the gentleman got up and he says, I have a dream. And I said, wow, that man is powerful. Mom, who is that? She says, that's Dr. Martin Luther King. And I, I didn't, didn't know what the meaning was at the time, but I was so impressed. But I can tell you I've been, uh, I've been around and I've seen many things happen. And I think Black Lives Matter, which has brought out so many ethnic groups today to, to try to uh, reconcile, you know, the, the inequities and the discrimination that still exist today and uh, that is so heartening I mean I, I just couldn't believe it and and I just uh, just am so happy that all people of all ethnicity are out involved in this Black Lives Matter and it's just so ridiculous and that's why we have to push forward if, if somehow deceptively uh, Proposition 16 loses the battle is still on I mean, the battle is still there, and we're going to make it happen. So today has is, is been, a, been a, uh, a day in which I, I feel blessed, but it's a day that I'm rejuvenated. Uh, this uh, Black Lives Matter has rejuvenated me to go forward and fight even harder for the inclusion of African Americans, other minorities, and women and we shall not give up.